What is down everybody is your main course Lil Pancake welcome back to another video ladies and gentlemen today we are doing some animalia research we're researching the animals hold on yeah so hopefully you all are ready to fill your brains with knowledge that is very useful let's get into it smash like the ard wolf protellus christatus christatus the ard wolf a wolf of ard not a wolf not an aardvark an ard wolf let's start by talking with the name and taxonomy then we'll talk about its characteristics then we will perchance talk about their habitat then maybe even their behavior and we might even finish it off by talking about their diet why is diet last I like to switch things up. I messed up the document, but we're too far committed now. So, name and taxonomy. Let's go. The Ardwolf is actually a hyena. One of four species of hyena in the family Hyenidae. The name Ardwolf means earth. Wolf, um, the Ard prefix, I suppose, is earth. It also has some other common names such as manhar jackal termite eating hyena which will come in play soon um and civet hyena what's with the scientific name protellus cristatus that's peculiar protellus means complete in the front why would the ard wolf be complete in the front because it's got five front toes on each foot um, and only four toes in the back. We'll, we'll talk about that again later. Their species name is much cooler, I think. Cristatus. So this means provided with a comb. And that's referring to the mane that they have. They just said, hey man. Here, you might need this. That was way too much effort for that bit. Let's get into a little bit more taxonomy. Uh, it was formerly its own family the Protilidae family. It wasn't grouped in with the hyenas, but uh, since it, it has been changed because the scientist agreed that the Ardwolf diverged from hyenids. Hyenids. Now, there is controversy on the date estimate of when Ardwolfs diverged from typical hyenas. So the fossil records, there's two ways of kind of telling. You can tell by fossil records and genetics. These two estimates are 10 million years apart, which is quite a few years. They're still working on it. They're still working on it. Uh -huh. And yeah, that's that's name and taxonomy for the Ardwolf there. Pretty cool. Some goofy little, goofy little things, some interesting phylogeny or taxonomy. Oh, phylogeny too. Moving. To their characteristics what when you go searching for these guys when you get your binoculars out you get your notepad down and you're going on the Ardwolf quest what are you gonna look for the first thing you're gonna look for is a tongue why do I say that because it's the first thing that I have written down their tongues are very unique they they have large and sticky tongues that are very tough so they're very, they're not like our tongues. Our tongues are very tender, you know. If I go like, it kind of hurts a little bit. Their tongues are very tough, and this is because, as we'll get into later, they eat termites, and termites bite. So they got to be able to withstand that. So they they do, because they're big and strong. As mentioned previously, they got five toes in the front, four toes in the back. Why? Good question. I have no idea. As far as overall build, they're pretty similar to the more commonly known striped hyena, but they are a little, s little smaller. They have kind of a slimmer body, slender, and uh, also a more slender muzzle, nose area. As for the color of their coat and whatnot, they have a yellowish base coat with black stripes up and down the body. They also have diagonal stripes going down their uh, like fore and hind quarters down their legs and the very bottom of their legs are completely jet black 
let's see they got a long mane as also previously mentioned so yeah this this mane goes down the middle of their neck kind of like a line and starts under their back even as for the tail bushy tail black tip pretty standard tail uh tail is uh, 8 to 12 inches long body is 22 to 31 inches long 16 to 20 inches tall so fairly small only 15 to 22 pounds and uh, these dimensions make it the smallest member of the hyenae family. They also have specialized teeth. Usually, like like if you look at a hyena's teeth, it's going to have a big canines. It's going to rip meat, you know. Uh, these guys eat insects. So they have more like molars that are specialized just for them, which is very nice. They're special. I wish I was as special as a, as an ard wolf. Their lifespan is anywhere from 8 to 20 years. Um, this is a very wide estimate. I saw across the sources that I looked, I saw a couple different estimates. Um, this 8 to 20 was kind of the, the widest one. One of them was, I think, 9 to 16. But we're just going to say 8 to 20 to cover all of our bases. Now, now that you know what to look for, where are you going to go to find these aardwolves? That is the question of the century. We're well, going to have to go to Africa. But not just anywhere in Africa. You have to go to the eastern end or the southern end. Not the southeastern end. There's a gap, which is peculiar. They are only found in areas that also house um, termites in the family Hodotermitidae. So if you can't find those termites, you ain't finding an aardwolf. Main kind of habitat is a uh, shrubland in drier plains areas. They don't go up in the mountains or into the forests, really, so that's where you find them. For the majority of the year, aardwolves share territory. They live in dens, so they'll share their territory and their dens with a bunch of other ones. They'll kind of rotate through. But breeding season comes along, only one adult pair per territory. Unless there's food scarcity or something like that, they can kind of uh, improvise, but... Typically speaking, one adult pair occupies a territory of about 0.4 to 1.5 mile, square miles, uh, 1 to 4 square kilometers. So that's where you're going to go to find them. Now what are they going to be doing when you find them? They are nocturnal. They sleep during the day, they hang out in their burrows, and then when, when the sun sets and nightfall is upon us, they strike. They strike hard, they strike fast, and they eat termites, but we'll get there. Um, so yeah, their, day, their days are lax. When they get into a confrontation, when they're like, I'm going to get you, the, uh, they, their, one of their main defense mechanism is popping that mane up to look bigger, you know what I mean? Uh, kind of like a cat does with their, like, the hair up there stick the hair in the back up, the arch, the aardwolves stick their mane up, look bigger. Respect. What happens when there is an intruder in your territory, right? So during mating season, which we'll talk about mating in a minute, but what happens when there's an intruder, okay? Because these are primary, primarily solitary uh, animals, so what happens when they're intruder? First of all, their first course of action is just trying to chase them right she's like hey you're on my territory get off and that usually works fights are very rare among ard wolves but but there is a fight it's usually very noisy um make barking noises roaring noises like kind of a softer like eh, 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 type noise that's completely made up i don't know if that's the noise they make or not and the only other confrontations that they have are with predators and these include leopards, lions, and spotted hyenas. So, some interfamilial um, aside. Familial aside. Kind of like homicide, but within your family. Something interesting is that tip, they typically lose some of their teeth as they get older. But this really isn't a big deal because they eat insects. They don't need all of their teeth that badly, so doesn't really have much of an effect but they do it i mentioned earlier that they were nocturnal during very cold winters they sometimes become diurnal means that during during cold nights they don't go out 
to hunt so that they can conserve heat. Um, and sometimes they'll go out kind of early in the day or late in the day to get their belly full. Um, all right, let's move on to mating. So during the mating season, which kind of changes, they don't. It's it's a peculiar situation with mating, too complex for my very um, Neanderthalic brain. So during mating season, though, they form monogamous pairs and maintain their territory with that pair. So it's just one male, one female, and they tight. They like this for real, for real. Both sexes go around their territory and mark it with their anal glands. So they kind of excrete a substance out of the anal glands that lays down their trail. And they do this a lot. Like it's a almost constant. So one pair, one monogamous pair, can have up to 10 different dens on their territory uh, that they kind of rotate through. Which we'll, we'll kind of we'll kind of touch on this in diet, but they they kind of will stay at one den that's near one termite mound, and then once they kind of eat there, they'll go to an, the next den and rotate around. So they can have up to ten dens on their territory, and they also have multiple middens, which a midden is pretty much just a toilet. It's where they go to use a bathroom. Pretty cool, pretty advanced, pretty uh, pretty high society of them, if I do say so myself. Um, the dens that they live in, they can kind of make their own, but typically they are just abandoned dens from either aardvarks or porcupines that they kind of rep repurpose, which is nice of them. They can also excrete a foul-smelling liquid from their anal glands. Whoa. From their anal glands that uh, scares off some predators too. Every now and then, I mentioned that... that uh, they were monogamous. They form monogamous pairs. Every now and then, that one guy, a dominant male, takes an opportunity with a female and swoops in and woos her. Um, and this usually causes fights, which, uh, you know, kind of similar to humans, to be honest. Also something very interesting, copulation, which is... Um, uh, last between one and four and a half hours. I don't know about you. That seems a little excessive. Gestation, so post-copulation. Uh, last between 89 and 92 days. So pretty, pretty on the nose there with how long it takes. Uh, typically two to five cubs are born. They weigh from seven to 12 ounces at birth. Their first six to eight weeks of life are spent strictly in the den. Um, then after three months, they begin going out with their parents hunting, and they'll typically share dens with their mother all the way up until the next mating season, so a year, pretty much, and they are sexually mature after 1.5 to 2 years. I've been mentioning this whole time, them eating termites and bugs, and you're probably like, what the heck is this wolf? this hyena doing eating bugs let's talk about it see that's what i was building suspense you know ard wolves are insectivores which means that they only eat insects so they don't hunt big animals they don't they don't hunt gazelles they don't eat carrion they eat insects and insect larvae so termites are their main food source that's what they like that's what they stick to, you know, kind of like me and chicken, you know. So in one night, a singular aardwolf can eat up to 300,000 termites. One night. That is a lot of termites. So fun fact, they eat soldier termites is one of the species of termite that they eat. And they are one of very few animals that can actually eat these fellas because the soldier termites release a chemical defense that gets away, gets rid of pretty much all uh, predators. But aardwolves have genetic, have developed a genetic trait that allows them to tolerate it. Not even a problem to them. Pretty cool. They are also kind of conservationists. So unlike aardvarks, 
me and my homies hate aardvarks. Um, aardwolves do not destroy the termite mounds that they eat. Uh, they simply lick the termites off of the ground around the termite mound. So, and they do not consume the entire colony so that the termites can rebuild. This is why I was saying late, earlier, when they have multiple dens, those dens are close to a termite mound. So say you have five dens, five termite mounds. You eat at den one, you eat at termite mound one. You don't eat it at all. Then you eat two, three, four, five. And then once you finish five, you can come back to one and the termites have rebuilt their society. And you can come cause carnage again. So it's quite smart because they just have a constant food supply. And they do this by, you know, memorizing the locations of all the mounds returning every few months. Um, now, you might be thinking, you're licking termites off the ground. You're going to lick up some sand. You're in the African deserts, I mean. And that that's true. They do, in fact, consume a lot of sand. But this is intentional because the sand helps them with digestion because of their kind of soft, not, not very teeth um, they don't chew up the termites quite as much as they should so the sand helps them digest so that's very nice and as I mentioned they do not eat carrion which is a common misconception because uh, it's not uncommon to see a aardwolf like hunched over a dead animal carrion and um, so people just assumed Oh, there, there, there's a hyena eating a dead animal. Nothing new here. Uh, but they're actually just eating the bugs and the larvae that are on the dead corpse. And that's that's all about the aardwolf, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. I learned a lot. Now I know what an aardwolf is. Pretty, pretty nifty specimen, per se. So yeah, make sure to smash like, make sure to subscribe. I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Make someone else's day better if you can. Somebody you know is going through something. I guarantee it. Might be you. And all they really need is someone to be there for them. And for someone to let it known that you're there for them. So I think the moral of the story would be to reach out to people and tell them that you love them. Tell them that you're there for them. Because sometimes... The way you show it doesn't get received. So make it clear. You, you know, you can't tell someone that you love them and then them be confused as to whether or not you love them. You know, that's kind of a, a blanket statement, you know. Speaking of which, I love you. You are loved by me. And I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and rest of your week. And I will see all of y'all... Later.